Okay, it's Monday night again. Which means more disco. Mm -hmm. This might be the week you get your gun back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I apparently have to confront an old lady. Yes, the pigs. The pigs? Yes, that's that's her name. Oh, that's okay. That's what they call her. Hmm. Anyway. Might meet some communists. Yeah, I'm trying to go over what we did last week. We, we did, we, uh... Oh yeah, we finished up the church stuff. Yeah. Well, for the most part, I think there's... Is there a loose end on the church I think stuff? there I was. Remember. I can't remember exactly, but it might be in your task log mm -hmm. or whatever. There's still something to interact with in this room. I don't, I don't think I can go in there anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure. Unless you can... Go in nope, through the house. So. Maybe you can. Maybe it only locks at night. Yeah, maybe. It's not like anybody else is going to go in here. Oh, we've got a broken down bathroom door. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet. Or the weird suitcase on the hat rack. Or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. The man is finding it hard not to trip on the tape <clears throat> and not to send any of the bottles rolling across the floor. <laughs> Where unidentifiable sludge makes it hard for him to breathe. Smells of vomit in here. <laughs> no problem, officer. <laughs> Oh yeah, and we talked to the lady up here. Yeah, Klausia. Or Klausia. Got so, some more truth about what happened with the murder. Mm-hmm. I guess we do have an option to confront Titus. Yeah. About that. Um, oh, yes. Oh yeah, let me check the quest log, see if there's any more loose ends with the church business. I think there was something, maybe? Split a kilo of kunok from the pigs and get your gun back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you need to help Egghead with the bees. Yeah. I don't know if I ever did that. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, this is communism. I still have this for ever. Find the murder weapon. Yeah, working fire and it shoots four four six. I just can't tell oh, you yeah. the case. There's some like check you didn't pass, I think, that you could still pass to find out more stuff, but that was days ago. So find out more stuff about what? About like the background of the case. I think it's mostly about like your departments. Oh, okay. Yeah. Find booze and trinket smokes and smoke them. Uh, victims' tattoos. Oh yeah, I think eventually you'll have to talk to Klossy about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I need to investigate these strange whirling doors. Yeah. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. The door does not. Oh, we talked to Kim. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the logic check that you would have oh, to get okay. past to. Uh... Wonderful. What is your takeaway? I can't stop a grown man from learning about the fundamental geographic and anthroponetic features of our world, can I? Anthroponetic? That's a new word for me. In Elysium, behind our eyes, like all human beings, detective, the world is what it is. I'm glad to see you're stable. Keep it that way. Now, was there anything else, or should we get to it? Mm. 
Oh yeah, and we have the stuff of Kuno's dad. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of interested to see where that goes, but I'm also kind of yeah. frightened. <laughs> I know of at least one more major, I guess, sort of side quest you haven't stumbled upon yet. Oh, okay. But I think that's it's around the boardwalk area. Oh, to like... Like yeah. over here? Yeah. Oh, okay, so I might explore around there too. Yeah, I think I explored around there once. I okay. did like a once over with like traps and stuff. Yeah. I guess I could also investigate the other traps there. <laughs> yeah, let's maybe do that. Oh, Ted says definitely check that side plus out. Yeah, I think you have to get up on the side, up on the boardwalk. It's like facing out toward the sea. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that was green, but make sure I have the sound turned down first. Yeah. <laughs> Traps. I don't remember where all the traps were. I'll hold down the tab key. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Oh, there's, I see Locust still in there. Yeah. <laughs> Just dead and dying Locust, and the slow sway of surrounding reeds. Poor things. <laughs> oh, empathy. That one guy there with the sun. Oh yeah. That's that guy's name. It's something kind of Nordic. Yeah, and he sounded kind of Nordic as well. Yeah. He's very into computers and technology, I think. Yeah. Oh, money. smell it. Keep it in now. Don't overreact. Breathe. Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. The lieutenant has already brought the <laughs> to his nose. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've been this yeah. area. This is what I was talking about. I wonder if it was closed off before. Or yeah, I'm just not sure. Across it. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent water is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. <laughs> he shakes his head with genuine sadness. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Revachol. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. A man lies on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him, 
is an empty bottle of spirits in his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Mm -hmm. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, oh. starting with the right leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is has been dead for two days. Oh. No longer. We need to investigate. So he, was a, he might have been alive. <laughs> Back in Another dead body. Here. This Here, is like... your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. He's wearing mud cake boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library car folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. Well over a liter of pure ethanol. Three bottles of wine or one and a half of spirits. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his mustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. I hear something about a chewing gum wrapper before. Be very, very careful where you step here. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. A 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. It's mid-market spirits with a slight touch of menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself. Have a good time. Tear all around us. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. <laughs> I was about to. I, was, yeah. I had that thought in my head. True. It feels disrespectful. <laughs> uh. Rabowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario. Even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? At least this man knew how to party. Imagine the same scene without the bottle. Now that would be just sad. <laughs> oh, this is an omen, a sign from above. Don't start drinking again.
we do know that he was married. Hmm. But you're right. Let's not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident and related to the murder case. Oh yes. <laughs> Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. <laughs> What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the parks. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although, there's still a question of identifying the body. From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal, and this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Good call. The guys at processing can take care of the rest. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Gemrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005 5511 or visit us at Moreau Street 78. Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Good idea. There was plenty of information here to go by. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is... The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. <coughs> Most of these titles seem to be in the yeah. sci-fi genre. Some thrillers, too. Oh, yeah, the flowers you got from the roof. I didn't know you could interact with those. But I, I never got them on my playthrough, so... Six crumbling petals rest on your palm. They're white. A bell-shaped crown. This is the insulindian lily, called Maybells or Lucille's Tears during the revolution. Girls used to pin these on soldiers before sending them off to battle. The revolutionaries saw the commoners and the anarchists. White's their color, but the custom started in the suzerain's army, so it held meaning for the kingsmen too. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths then also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the civil war. Yes, but not this early, not to my knowledge. It looks dried, preserved. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. The petals feel dry and fragile in your hand. Wait, have you noticed there's a war veteran playing a ball game on mm. the plaza? Oh, okay. You should ask him about the flowers. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, and down this way is where the guy is somewhere. There they are. See how they're doing? Hello again. <laughs> um, I'm not comfortable asking people for money. Yeah. You don't really need money, much these days. Sure, there's some stuff you can still buy in like the pawn shop or from mm -hmm. the guy selling clothes, but I don't know if there's a ton of use for it. Oh, here's the church. I wonder if I can fast travel from here. Should be able to, yeah. Vigilance officer? What can this old carabineer do for you? I prefer the old name, Insulindian Lily. Girls brought them to young cadets when they entered service. Wearing them on your cap was supposed to bring good luck. It used to be. But the communards were fond of them too. Call them revolutionary flowers. Bells of the revolution. You know what? No, they bought me misery, false hope, and disappointment. The revolutionaries sullied them. But it wasn't the revolutionaries that sullied the idea for you, was it? She gave them to me too, and your jealous little heart just Aww. couldn't accept it. <laughs> Enough! I can go over these matters in detail with you, Gaston. But not while we have company. So, officers. Maybells don't blossom yet, do they? Maybe on some remote parts of the city they do. But I think you have to wait for at least a month. <laughs> Through the pool in the sea. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh. I need composure. Okay. Real quick, let's see what my composure sitch is. Oops. Uh, composure is yellow, right? Looks like yes. I'm not augmenting it at all. Yeah. Which is weird. Oh, there's a plus composure. Green snakeskin shoes. Oh boy. There we go. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? <laughs> Is this something I can try again? Do you yeah, think? if okay. you put points on it. Okay. Oh. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip V before him. Don't you mean Fissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven, <laughs> although he was a clown. But he was our clown, ours to ridicule. And to mourn. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. yeah. 
Wow, total six. My goodness. Yeah, must be a pretty tough one. I don't know if I ever got this one because my yellow stuff wasn't very good. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabiner do for you? Oh God. Still, all you see is an old soldier refuses to replace his uniform with a civilian attire. Anything else I can assist? Officer, what can this old carry be? <laughs> doesn't want you figuring out Renee's secrets. Yeah. Vigilance officer, what can this old carry be? <laughs> Vigilance officer, what can this old cow <laughs> do? Wow, it's what do you weird. See old soldier refusing. <laughs> I should put another point in. Vigilance officer. What can this old carry? As Renny turns from you to his partner and back, the medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted, displaying them proudly. Two, the larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles, the medal hangs from a blue striped triangle. A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written below. For bravery. It's a conflicted topic for the old veteran. There must have been a number of controversial episodes in his service days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure. But I know this uniform's reputation. <laughs> you are also wondering if I go oh, shooting women or killing babies. <laughs> Son, we should never forget our past. Lots of mistakes were made back then, but there were also lessons. Forgetting those times means the mistakes were for nothing. That all those people died for nothing. Whoa. Sounds like you're about to open the gates of conversation. <laughs> this man will literally talk your ear off if you let him wander off to memory lane. For doing my duty in the heat of battle, for looking my mortality in the eye, when men like Gaston here hid in the bushes and shat themselves. <laughs> he saved some muddy princeling who foolishly strolled into the front line in his gown of velvet and gold. It was on the first months of the revolution here in Revachel. Unrest was spreading like wildfire. Marauders had taken most of the Koran and were getting really ambitious. King Frisell thought he could end it all in one decisive strike. Sent his cousin, Drisson, to put an end to the unrest. Alas, the young Drisson was all piss and no vinegar. Wearing a tunic of purple velvet and cockatoo feathers to battle. <laughs> Even his rifle was god plated. Oh, jumped Jesus. from five clicks away. Can you imagine the asininity? Asininity, I like that. Mm -hmm. He really despises that Drisant fellow. <laughs> purple velvet tunic. Hmm. That isn't exactly camo. To keep the long and bloody story short, Drisant marched us against the partisans in Koran. And when I say march, 
I mean, made us walk into captured enemy territory single file, like toy soldiers, while he rode in front on his giant red stallion. The rebels were smart. They let us come real close before opening fire. Suffice to say, it was carnage. I got shot in the left shoulder and went down. Just a flesh wound. But just as I turned over, the prince fell into the mud next to me. He was missing his lower jaw. Then his horse, driven mad by the noise and smell of gunpowder, stepped on my leg and shattered my knee. <laughs> I grabbed my sidearm and shot the beast in the head. Then everything went black. Capitaine Arnaud, le fléau des chevaux. When I came to, it was all over. It was just me and Joe Lestresson, gurgling in the blood-soaked mud right next to me. The Dink had taken numerous flesh wounds and lost a lot of blood. But despite missing his jaw, he seemed hesitant to die. Tougher than he looked, that one. <laughs> Johnny Walsh. <Lodge. laughs> I've been through worse. <laughs> so I grabbed the dink and started crawling. Kept going until the 59th cavalry picked us up. Through some miracle, we both survived. And the jeweler's freak convinced Frisell to give me a medal for not leaving him to die in his own blood, piss, and shit. He was the commanding officer, and I was on duty, just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the son for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. You sense he's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, and untarnished self-worth. The old carabineer stands quietly like a statue, his features motionless. What Monseigneur Modesty is not telling you is that he crawled over seven kilometers before the cavalrymen found him and Drizon. Two days later, that was. And that even while crawling with mongrel half dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself. It's there. <laughs> Sorry, officer, but you're reading me all wrong. I'm a man of peace, and these kinds of bloody heroics are only impressive to men like Rene himself. Certainly not to me. <laughs> How did you find the story to be, officer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bon Dieu. You and Gaston must be related. His blood runs yellow too. Maybe, maybe, but also bear in mind, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service record. Oh no, you have to get shot. Repeatedly, and you need to get your hands bloody too. Really, really bloody. Do not speak of what you know nothing about, Poltroon. Duty is something you will never understand. Because he was a goddamn dandy. Had no business leading men or even being on the battlefield. All he was was related. That's it. Royal blood alone doesn't make army commanders. He was a stupid kid, only interested in horses, hairstyles, and man-loving. <laughs> 782 royal carabineers are dead because of his incompetence. The old carab... What? Mon and that even... What Is that pride in his voice? Maybe, maybe, but also be in mind, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service record. It seems like the same dialogue. Yeah. Oh no! You do not speak of what you know nothing about. Bah! There were many such stories in those days. 
Many such men, too. True Abishaulians. Men with backbone. Oh, yes, René, yes. Men <laughs> were bigger, girls were prettier, and everyone wore the fascia. Lord, please, bring those days back, if you can. <laughs> I'm not getting into this with you again. <sighs> Officer, was there anything else? You should try to come up with a heroic story of your own. Impressive <laughs> oh God, I've story. never seen this one before. Oh my God. <laughs> Minus two through the pool of the sea. Yeah. Can I go back and get it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try this yeah. just for the I'm hell. curious to see what a failure looks like. To be anything worth mentioning among your achievements, <laughs> you should resort to good old <laughs> Uh, I had a dog, Fifi. <laughs> Special Forces Black Ops. <laughs> Should we go with Fifi or Black Ops? Hmm. <laughs> really? <laughs> what was the unit? <laughs> he sounds the fifth. I'm here. We'll get back to our game now, you see? <laughs> Strange. He didn't buy it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, shucks. I uh, should have gone with the Fifi angle. Alright, uh... What was I doing? Oh, yes. I can go to the motor carriage and report that dead body. Yeah. <laughs> Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? One moment. <laughs> Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? The man was about 173 centimeters tall. Stout, with dark hair and a moustache. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he slept. There were bottles all around him, and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Any information on the library card? Good. You have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? I have assigned the case to Lieutenant King Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how people get when the police call. Mm. Billy, Billy Majon, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. Mm. Yes, hello, are you still there? I found Billy Majon's home address, is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. Mm. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Oh. It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. Maurice, what? A woman yells. Then. Yes, yes. Okay. If it was the police. She starts explaining something. 
Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. Mm. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87, but we don't have it yet. Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. And then goes for a little drink later, on the lookout. Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Marie! <laughs> she said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. Uh, one second. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Yes? Hmm. Like I said, I don't see any options to talk to him about that in case. Okay. Okay, apartment 20. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Let's go this way. Gotta go around. <laughs> Is Kuno's dad also in the apartment complex? Yeah, he's somewhere in there. Okay. Might as well maybe do that. Yeah. And then, uh. Alright, we have this. Both those evening meetings. Yeah. Let's see. Those were at 10 p.m., I think. So I think like 11. Oh, okay. I'm not sure exactly. I'm sure it says something like your class. to be reinforced. Yeah, this is 28, so we want 20. Uh... A weathered brown door. The number... Something smells good. Soup along, yo. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. This is the door. You already know it's the right door. This is going to be so hard. You're right. Let's do this true. You hear light footsteps passing by the door and some folk music playing on the radio. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, Delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Dad, just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Good advice. No. <laughs> <laughs> Try to bail out. The lieutenant motions towards the door. Hello? Who is it? And someone turns down the radio. The police? I 
moment. Please give us a moment. Tidying up. Nervously. There's fear in her voice. Come in. The door is open. Oh, okay, that guy. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief. For now, you're on your own here. He must feel vulnerable without his glasses. Is this why he's letting you take the lead? Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. Keep it together. You don't want your body language to tell her the news. Sorry, I'm rambling. It's just <laughs> that Victor often gets into all kinds of trouble. So. How can I help you? It's me, Victor, and the kids here. We have two daughters, Jenny and Jolie. The girls are staying at their friend's place tonight. And Victor is... out. She swallows visibly. He has a problem with drinking, and so he disappears every now and then. He's probably in the parks drinking with his friends. I sent him to the library a few days ago, but I guess something came up. No, I guess I'll find out when he decides to come back home. It shouldn't be long from now. He's never gone for more than a few days. His old leather jacket. Um, it's just your average brown leather jacket, but he bought it as a teenager, so... Yes. The lining is hand-sewn. It's blue. I tried to make the thing more weatherproof since he's running around with it in the middle of winter. Oh, it's in Janrock. The one at Mayro Street. I don't know the official name. Central Jamrock Public Library? I think, yes, if that's the one on Mero. Just to return a book of mine? Why? Why all those questions, detective? Did he... Do something? Break something? It's a fool's hope. Yes. She folds her hands across oh. her chest. You've done this before. Just keep your focus. What did you say? Oh. Oh. But he was just... But he was just here. Alive. We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? Was he drunk? I see. And you just found him there, lying in the cold. How long had he been there? If you say two days, maybe, it will be etched in her mind forever. <laughs> she blinks, eyes welling up with tears as her hand starts searching for something from the pockets of her dress. Here.
No, no. I just need to tell my girls. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? No. A day. Good. That's probably the right thing. Thank you. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still... Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I'll call if... These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon. Already, she starts to shake. We should step outside and talk. I'll call the station when we are finished with the day, and let them know the name of the deceased. They'll manage. That's it. We should get back to our case now that our duty here is done. Let's go. All right. Okay, flight number 12. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if there's... Oh. It's it seems like maybe a story with a little more levity. We'll see. <laughs> that is a very heavy scene. Yeah. I think 12 is that way, You're the way you're headed. Okay. A shabby door hangs oddly okay. on its hinges, oh. secured to the door frame oh, he with needs a safety the chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, oh. threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno de Reuter. And the place comes <clears> with <throat> three months' worth of utility bills. I'm supposed to break in. I guess so. Uh, where's that tool? Uh... Is it chain cutters or? I'm not sure. Let me check. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges. Secured oh, to the, use the cutters on the chain. Okay. We'll click save here. Yeah. I think you might have interfacing gloves if you're not wearing them. Oh, okay. It's an interfacing check? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, hinges. You should, they won't help at all if you're already at the max. Oh, yeah. I wonder if I should knock first. Is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to <clears throat> Mr. Uno de Reuter. No response. The apartment numbers have fallen off the door, leaving the panel with a sticky one shaped shadow and a marker drawn two. Good thing you already have the chain cutters in your hand. Nothing left to do now but snip, snip. Your face is exciting. Snip. The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick. <laughs> Master Investigator, you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? <laughs> nothing, nothing. You're right. Get in there, deep. Invade every personal space. <laughs> Break every lock. Yes, that's what it is. A quick peek here, a short glance there. It's all quite delectable.
Uh oh, I think I hear snoring. Yeah. Kuna de Reuter. Jeez. Oh, see erotica. A phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine, conveniently equipped with a straw. Good. Confiscate it. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest the lieutenant in the slightest. He listens instead to something <laughs> in the other room. He pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Oh, take 10 crews, that is optional. <laughs> okay, I think I'm good. <laughs> Communists are or, near somewhere. Oh, okay. But I think you have to wait till like 11. Yeah, let's see. It's get yourself organized. Oh, yeah. After 22. Yeah. At the Cape Side Apartments. I don't think it doesn't say which one. Yeah. But there was a room with like a bunch of. Yeah, like it was like a bust of paraphernalia. Famous convicts. Yeah, I think it's that one because the antlers are the communist symbol one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's probably a good guess. Should I shut the door, maybe? <laughs> you probably could. You don't want someone stealing Kuno's homework. Yeah. We'll finish it someday. So lonely without the dead body. Yeah, throw rocks at. Kuno's a little shit show. Fuck does Kuno care? All right, so you got Kuno's kilo. Here is how we do it. First, give Kuno Kuno's kilo, then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way, street way. <laughs> Do it all myself. Kuno knows what Kuno means. All right. Kuno knew you'd try that sneaky pig shit on him. Tell him, Kuno. Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. So Kuno's gonna give you one more chance. <laughs> oh, you know this pig shit is major. Made your fucking choice, pig. Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The pieces are moving, pig. <laughs> this is fucking domino shit. Not like he thinks, but you can feel it. Somehow, <laughs> this will change things. Tick, 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 tick. Decision time. What's it gonna be? You gonna fuck the Kuno? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I wish I can consult Kim, but I guess I just have to make a call.
kind of more curious to see what happens if I don't give it. Yeah, I I gave him the drugs when I did my place. Oh, right, I don't know what happens. You fucked the Kuno. Everybody, Kuno got fucked by his pocket pig. Just when we get in our business on, the pig throws it all away. I told you he can't be trusted. I told you. I told you. I told. I told you he'd steal the shit. Relax, see. We got plenty of kilo, kilo underground in the tree. This ain't about that. This is about you and Kuno. You mismanaged this shit. Now everything is fucked between us. How are you gonna make this up to the Kuno, huh? In truth, Kuno doesn't really believe there's anything you can do to make up for this. The damage is irreparable. The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got plans. Yeah, so fucking what? Fuck are you talking to Kuno about that kiddie shit? <laughs> He's trying to fuck you again. Fuck out of here. Kuno knows it's fucking lame. That's why Kuno changed it. Kuno can change his name into anything. I'm gonna change my name into... <laughs> Don't change your name into that, Kuno. <laughs> Fuck right there, where? Fucking three years or some shit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about that electricity and light shit. Just wants to pound on people and drink. That's right. It's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground. La Rome shit. Ancient shit, Kuno's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. Yeah, in a tomb, Kuno! <laughs> that didn't change shit, pig. That only made things worse. Fucking social worker shit. It doesn't work, pig. It doesn't work, Kuno. Only our shit works. <laughs> Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> right then. <laughs> I guess that's it for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how do I make it? His jam harder core. Yeah. <laughs> I think I remember how that one like ends up, but I don't remember the exact steps to get there. Uh, okay. I might just if you want to pull that, you might just talk to the people in the church and see if you have any like, checks you could make. Sure. Andre's compression algorithm. Yeah. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. <laughs> you can try to dance. But it won't go well. <laughs> I should probably try this. Oh! Close your eyes and dream of the shapes your body should form to bring this strange music into life. For now, such ferocity of motion is beyond you. But just imagine the moves you could pull to this futuristic beat. Puts a grin on your face. Oh, okay, I'll hear it right back. Even a failed attempt gets the juices flowing and repairs some of the damage done by battles lost. If you up the dose and truly dance, who knows what will happen? Salvation. <laughs> 
Goodbye, officer. Welcome back. Oh. I catch the silver bird. With one bat in his sharp eyes. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. You, <laughs> you really came through for the hardcore underground. Yes, you really came through for the <laughs> hardcore underground. How come? <laughs> Andre is busy cutting oh, okay. some slightly less lame. But still, yeah, ungainly okay. shapes on the church floor, sweating profusely. A cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the bass. This is a corrupt scheme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a miracle of carpentry. Dead bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. I don't say much anything as a carpenter anymore. They tried to make me into a reckoner and a leveler. Made me a bit manic, you know. I regret the time I dedicated to that profession. And that worker collective. I say things more as a member of the hardcore side dance community these days. Why? You're a cop. I carry carpentry tools. That's right. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it, on the coast here, was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something, but I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves and nature. Pre-industrial quantities of solitude. The sea, perhaps something more fundamental. He means something paranatural. He must... I would want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. Maybe... Maybe they were unable to face the nature of the world, perishing. A cop who's in the building critique. Okay then, this is folk DeLoreanism, lawmonger, huh? It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. Total. Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just an homespun version of it. Folksy stuff, early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? Like that woman there. Vertical, thin, white, a false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. Like to show off large and intricate structures, arches, spires, put you down with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know. Marriage shit. Virtue and tyranny. Marriage shit. <laughs> Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside before the sea wind took all the paint off. Dead bodies of perennial plants. Mm. Sigma functions are left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high quality carcass. The power of anodic beats and hard bass is needed to reanimate it. A Sarai's man who lived a long time ago, an ancient hardcore brother. 
<laughs> a three thousand year old tyrannical regime of history built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self-appointed intellectuals it's false court i only said unity one word figures of authority always misquote you Andre doesn't care about the Ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. And Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say. You should listen to what they are. But were you wrong? The founding party is okay with everything. Look around. They don't have enough love for the human crew to oppose anything anymore. We're on our own. Anodic dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. You know what this kind of stuff goes well with. <laughs> <laughs> Your pleasure response was more like, just wondering if he has any. <laughs> I don't. Fucker give me the evil eye. <laughs> you defend her. Law minion, she was a mass murderer. What's up with that? Mellow man, mellow. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor. Humanism leads to eating sugar and pigs. Humanism was invented to mass produce billions of humans. Billions of humans can mass produce hundreds of billions of pigs. She liked games. Her legacy, the thing we live in, isn't real life. It's a strategy for some kind of victory against a long dead opponent. But yo, I'm only annoyed. What do I know? <laughs> She invented the beauty you're feeling. She and her glass cutters and iconographers. You set the standard, all right. Then you meet it. It's effective like that, but it is also very soft of core. That so-called beauty of hers. You wouldn't be the first. Millions liked her. She's got those mass murdering lips <laughs> the world spirit does not have a body it has organs hardcore is an organ of the world spirit this Arno Van Eyck track is an organ the carpentry and glass cutting that built this ass are also organs she's a thief if you ask me an organ thief all innocences are. <laughs> I like this question, cop man. She did not live the life of a human. She lived like someone who's playing a game. The life of an operator. That's not the life that humans live. She was adored. Humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me. <laughs> And they do not think I'm innocent or some shit like that. <laughs> well, they loved her. They put all their love in her and forgot all about the rest of us. What a strange choice of words. Caustic. Overflowing with negativity. That can't be oh. healthy. What's happening here? Why do you keep coming back to this window? Why do you keep saying that if it isn't making you feel well? Interesting. Don't come back to this anymore. Stop talking about that damn window. <laughs> Hard to say, cop man. Signs in here are distinctly wild. Gonna take a while before everything's properly synced. 
I did get to talk to the crab man, though. Anyway, hey, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of this place. Dude's seen some crazy shit, but he's actually a lot like us. Have you been listening to what X been saying? Love is hardcore, man. And the mother's love is the hardest core of all. <laughs> the man oh, picks no. up on stuff. And he knows a lot about the church. I've got a lot to learn from him. Good thing you didn't squash him. The crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things. Things that give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, the Ubies built this place about 320 years ago as a sarcophagus. Not like a literal sarcophagus. I'm just being metaphorical. Encasement, confinement of something they were afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. I think that's what the crab man is experiencing when he climbs around upstairs. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubies had heard about. I thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church surrounding it to contain it. I don't know, and it's not something they properly understood either, what it does, but it's what this sonar person is looking for and trying to measure. It will be fruitless though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything. All those things they really can't. Seems to be the trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like substance. Like a concentric ring spreading out the struggling villages. And that is what caused the communards to fail in defending the beachhead. Yeah, a lot of failure has gone down around here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's not a thing we can answer, cop man. Even I have limits. I'm a limited sire person. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we got on a good level here. The signs are syncing up well. Suspicious people are esoteric people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our signs synced. It's short for paranoid. That makes sense. A reasonable question. Say I get hurt. I want to make sure it never happens again. So I analyze the situation. Exercise caution. Caution is suspicion. Ah, uh, it'd be easier to list stuff I'm not suspicious of. I'm not suspicious of sand and color. Mechanics and chemistry also have a trueness about them. Most anything else deceives. Wants to steal your life away. This is a good, dangerous line of questioning. You should prod him on. <laughs> I don't have a top 10 list of things I'm most suspicious of, but if I had one, the left-right complex would be number one. Number two would be their sole accomplishment, the pig wheat paradigm. I prefer not to. Both ask the wrong question. Any spark of light from either one is accidental. Their combined movement's only concern is producing enough pig and wheat for everyone, the end goal of humanity. The original mistake was assuming that words have more being than bodies. That's what led us astray, far from our true lives, but we may yet find a way back. Whatever this true life is, you feel it's the real centerpiece of this mythology. It's our only shit. We should make better use of not being animals or cereal grain ourselves yes having food is means to an end but the left never talks about the end only the means caps are likewise suckers constantly sleepless in worry mental illness is a term the powers use to homogenize people 
I think I don't reach mental illness. I am merely politically ill. A suspicious element. His eyes flicker. But life is true if it's free from fear. An internal division among oneself. In others, mankind has seeds of greatness in it. A germinal will come. A return to trueness. It will be hardcore. Beats and bright lights to shatter falsehoods. <laughs> Nerve impulses for the collective body. We are very much alike in basic structure. An odd enough beat would awaken everyone to a truer calling. In unity. Just like that. The speed freak is right in your face. His eyes burning. His comrades look on worriedly. The young man is dead serious about this. Many non-Occidental cultures share a beat at their heart. Thus, they are closer to true, hardcore life. There's just never been enough of them, and they had to rely on some extremely basic percussion. Utmost dedication, thoughts from the spinal cord, is a potent superlative as well. Egghead usually has a better concept of the hardcore. He just really likes saying, hardcore. Hardcore! <laughs> Maybe you're being too specific about it. Try consulting with your spinal cord. <laughs> oh yeah, sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I forget what that is. They're hardcore. They're just clothes. Nah, these are just boring, normal, hardcore clothes. That's... That's outlandish. It looks like you're trying to hang yourself with it. So large, too. So many different patterns. It's crazy, man. I like it. You suddenly realize the patience and respect this speed freak has shown you is partly because of your style. He's probably not like that with everyone. Respect is a man! <laughs> you might want to heal yourself before you take many more checks. Yeah. Especially 3% ones. I'm going to take a short break and I'll be back soon. Yeah. Feel free to talk to Suna. Yes, what is it? <laughs> Lots of very low checks in here. Good morning! Yeah! Hard at car! The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body, her face oval and sad. I wonder if I can speak to Tiago still. School science fair. It's pretty neat. I'm sure you did. You have an exploratory creative streak, just like them. This? Oh, we're trying to see if we can come up with some cool new special effects to add to the visual aspect of our club experience. We tinker with things. Art, music, chemistry. Some chemicals, when mixed, can, you know, change color or sort of blow up. Blow up! Blow up! 
Not like, you know, in a dangerous way. Or, well, we're not going to do it in a dangerous way. Besides, did you know that smell experiences are all the rage now at the most forward-thinking venues? Very big in art circles. Yes. Chemistry has many uses. And police work too. <laughs> the young man looks startled for a moment, but then flashes you his most winsome smile. I hope you get to experience one of our lights in our show sometime, sir. It'll be a blast. Feel free to come back later and have a blast with these exemplars of youthful avant-gardism. But we really need to return to the present now. <laughs> This is how you get the hiss. Yeah, probably. I have to keep my eyes peeled for any inverted pyramids. map here. The apartments are so dark. I want to talk to the uh, pawn shop guy again. I can help you with anything. Have you made any hardcore advances? No. <laughs> All the checks were very low. Uh. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. Uh. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Uh. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. Maybe. Shady looking guys came in here yesterday. Looking like they'd just taken off their wild pines overalls. They asked if I have a police weapon to sell. I told them I already sold it. They went their way. It was a trip. But you know, all sorts of people come here asking for all sorts of things. Wait, then it might be true. Everard's claims. Maybe Claire really is tracking down your gun. Hmm. Sure, man. The boomboxes wait on the shelves, and your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that. Or any other time you'd need to play a tape. Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech. 
found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even though I don't really like music. <laughs> I would guess that interfacing check from Noid would progress the uh, the church disco oh, okay. the church nightclub quest, but I'm not 100 percent sure. <laughs> Noid is exactly the kind of person that the Bureau of Control will be monitoring extremely carefully. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Apparel peddler. Oh, yeah. So far, I'm like not here. <gasps> you know what's going to talk about. You'll get it someday. It's Lindian Fazbear. There's this lady that we haven't been able to talk to yet. Yeah. The woman still has her eyes fixed on the photograph in her hands I think at in the background at some the point radio plays. the main storyline might have you interrogate some truckers you might be able to talk to her more then oh, I think okay. you can also talk to her when Kim's not around oh, okay I'm not sure about that oh here's some people gathered at the... mm -hmm. I guess I do still have the option to talk to Titus oh yeah okay. Poor Daisy. Ugh. Always being bothered. <laughs> Sitting on my footrest right now. Right, I'll be back in a minute or so.
There. I have gone to the bathroom and back without disturbing the cat. Mm -hmm. The most important thing. It's in between my legs on the footrest right now. Okay. She really likes to be on whoever is playing the game. I don't know how she tells. But she's very smart. the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify <laughs> the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. She wasn't raped. The witnesses' statements were very clear. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. His hands become fists. And you win and pushed her. I am gonna fucking hit you. Done. Titus Hardy. <laughs> Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? The room is so quiet you could hear a pin drop. The rest of the cafeteria has gone quiet, too. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. What's on it? We call it the door gun a mega mix. You'll know why. Won't you listen to it? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. <laughs> Things got nice and quiet after that. It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day. Writing down what they God say, it, it gets hot as hell in there. <laughs> Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. I'm sure we can find a tape player. Where can I listen to this? Why don't you try shoving it up your ass, genius? Yeah, play it with your ass, cocksucker. I'm sure we can find a tape player. It's not a problem. <laughs> Your room had one. Or maybe it's too <laughs> broken. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments of Titus Hardy. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday.
compact tape player is still inside it. Seems it has completely broken down now. There's no fixing this one. Oh, this would have been very helpful <laughs> with the Mega Mix, but it isn't anymore. <laughs> Makinema only comes with radio. Let's try to find a new tape player. Yeah, Perhaps we should talk to Roy shop. at yeah. the pawn shop. He has stuff. Kim, you don't have a tape player in your room? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe you brought yours with you. It's not a fixture. Yeah, maybe. I can't remember if you ever get to go to, into Kim's room. I don't know. Oh, I, I probably should have checked. I won't even let me click oh. on it. Oh. Kim is just that private. Guess. What kind of skeletons are in that closet, Kim? Yeah. <clears throat> How are these guys doing? I haven't talked to them in a while. Yes? What is it? God damn it, you leave her alone. <laughs> Keep your weird bullshit to yourself and be professional for once, for fuck's sake. Can I actually help you with something? Yes, of course. Preposterous. I mean, you would remember if they were, right? Who forgets <clears throat> their squad mates? That's not possible. <laughs> of course I'm with him. Why do you ask? <laughs> oh god. You look cute together, it seems like a bad thing. Yeah. The sooner you figure this hanging out, the sooner everyone can go home. <laughs> Again? I can't believe this shit. <laughs> huh. What is all about? Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Yeah, we still have those boom boxes on the shelves. <laughs> That's what the boom boxes for. <laughs> Maybe I could get him to play it at the church. <laughs> I don't know, you might be able to. <laughs> you might as well see if I can save 20 bucks. It would be kind of hardcore, I guess. Yeah. Oh, near the, yeah, that's right. the car. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. Mirror. Oh yeah, like in my room, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big landmark. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, 
What is it? Okay, let's see if I can. Oh. Okay. It's tape play right there, though. I'm surprised, usually. Well, I think I have enough money to buy it. Probably. I think it was like 12, maybe. Yeah, something like that. You've probably got some stuff you could sell. Mm hmm. I think you still have the giant check you haven't cashed. There, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot about the giant check. I have to cash that somewhere? I don't know. I think you can just like sell it to get the money, but I'm not, okay. not exactly sure. Boombox's weight on the shelves, yeah. and your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. And here you are, quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever, turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. <laughs> Looks like you need to equip the tape player. Oh, okay. Uh, I get tools. Oh. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> the porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. <laughs> the tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. You push. Come on, set, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Revishan. <laughs> this is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. The harbor. That's the son of a Valson crane. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens, too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance a whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. End of recording. It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Still. Court, it could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. The third one must be relaying the signal. A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safre. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? Okay. This seems about. to contradict her testimony, <laughs> at least to some degree. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly, inappropriate even. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> uh, That's quite a look. <clears throat> Sp 
pee bottle. Oh. No, uh, let's see. I think that... Can I just, like, unequip it? Yeah, exactly. There we go. All right. <laughs> I think equipping the speed bottle is how you do drugs, but I never did a ton of drugs. Okay. Speed, I think, increases all your yellow stats, but oh, it does okay. damage to your red health. Oh, okay. Like physical health? Yeah. I think two of the drugs damage your physical health and two of them damage your mental health. That makes sense. Nicotine is the other one that hurts your physical health. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions <laughs> pertaining to a murder investigation. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. This does not surprise her. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. Mm, where did they get this recording, exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via a de-encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? <laughs> yeah, that was practically his pickup line. A memory surfaces in her tired neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it co holly style? He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little co -hoy. It wasn't his everything. No, I'm pretty sure he did all those things and then had to internalize them to keep on living until they just sort of turn into his, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Running joke. I was going to say running joke. And it sounds like he didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. <laughs> Lely. He was like the Semenes conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the valley. Oh, what? <laughs> Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up soldier of the apocalypse style. Did he tell you he had actually done any of the things in Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... 
He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lelystad. That's a good start. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. Aranje? Aranje's map of waterways? This fits with his tattoo. You are almost right, officer. That means his race was occidental, not mondial. I'll update the form. Mm. Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranjen Reik. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranje. It was bad habits. Sex. Alcohol. He was 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. We were slightly off then. Thank you for clearing it up. Amos. The adversary one. Blue. L light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Ah, oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made it oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Oh, that. Sure, waterways. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? And he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. 
He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer for money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands, and on other islands too, all of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. Change of topic, perhaps? All right. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Yeah, it's pretty deluxe. I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. Here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol? I always wanted to see the only city in the world in the worst time of the year. It's a tourist thing. I have no idea, officer. It is. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. He finds the answer unsatisfying. Thank you. I've put a lot of time and effort into it. <laughs> Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Revachon, but you should still reprimand her. With money, sir. It's not exactly the anti-star size caboodle I intend for it to be one day, but it's getting there. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, miss? Better safe than sorry. <laughs> oh, yes. One of my favorites. It cures many ailments. Like not being able to stay up for 36 hours. <laughs> not being happy. It cures those ailments. It's just a merit speed molecule, basically. <laughs> Very funky. <laughs> okay. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. <laughs> so confused about Paula. <laughs> Not my favorite topic, but okay. Cut. Cut all How about we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? It's the sound of a cat yeah, exploring just... the uh, washing machine and dryer. Yeah. She loves to discover things. mentioned talking to Titus again. Yeah. I think sort of this section of the story is trying to figure out who exactly is lying about what between Titus and Blasia. Yeah. The clowns are still hanging around. <laughs> what is it He's now? Calling a clown. Still calling us clowns, Titus? Mm -hmm. And he tenses immediately. Chest tightens, jaw sets, ready for another blow. That fucking fucker. <laughs> You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. She pretty much <laughs> laughed it off. Fucking fuckity fucker. And what did she say then? That is fine. 
people are supposed to be like that. Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. <laughs> All right. All fucking right. I guess it's good then. That fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawmen? Nah, I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head. Handled him? She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes, yes, we heard all about it. And the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men too are growing increasingly silent. The man is slowing down. Looks like a bad blood sugar crash. He can't keep track of all the variables anymore. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her, Titus said, Fuck off! <laughs> that lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. On the floor, bear drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? <laughs> I'll call the bartender. Some beers in us. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers union. Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. <laughs> 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. The window might be closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they would be. <laughs> oh my. Oh. This is this is is this a white check? Yeah, so you can retry this okay. at the point. Clasia is playing them like a fiddle. Tell them how bad they got played, and they'll tell you the truth. There are many ways to go about it. All of them really good. <laughs> Fell <laughs> Kim here? <laughs> Those are the other guys. My shit is solid gold. You can trust me. <laughs> oh, you don't like these arguments. Let's see you come up with your own, then. Come on. Everyone's waiting. Where are they? Why is Goldmouth mean to him? Something is wrong. It doesn't look like he's succeeding. <laughs> what fucking story? A story that fits the occasion, of course. Oh, I invented a wonderful allegory oh, for all this. No, no. There is no story. Fair enough. I was just going to make it up on the way. <laughs> Here comes the other good ideas. <laughs> uh, what fine. fucking story? A story that... No, no. There is no story. I didn't. <laughs> Let's not do Let's do questions. No, no. Don't listen to him. This is gold stuff. Now let's get didactic. <laughs> so you got play, huh? Good. You got his attention. Now reward it with a metaphor. 
<laughs> yes, yes, like a deck of cards. The point is, this allegorical Kim should have just told the truth. You need to man up and take charge, little guy. Shit's gotta be equal, couple. Listen to your buddy Titus here. Nothing like this would ever happen to a hardy boy. Thank you. I'll try. <laughs> Please understand that Kim in this story was an allegory for you. You shouldn't try to hide the truth. Sure, Beneclard. Allegory. You didn't get played. Titus did. I'm gonna do you a solid and change the subject, okay? This man would rather live in a <laughs> fantasy world where he isn't a complete loser. You need to be more forceful the next time. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was rhetoric? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, rhetoric. Up yeah, here. That's one of the blue ones up there. Yeah. You might have. I feel like there's like a pair of glasses or a tie or something that's a yeah. rhetoric boost. I'm sure if you got some rhetoric stuff. Clothes. Cat in a microphone. Sounds of Daisy. Jeez, maybe not. Oh, oh there there's a, a shirt. And minus one. Oh, yeah. I guess bumps aren't known for their rhetoric of the ways. Okay. It's you again. What is it? Hey, cat. You like Thomas's face? I don't oh, know God. what went wrong the last time. You have so many. Before you reset, players. why don't you try one of these other <laughs> just to see what happens? On a string. No, we fucking ain't, asshole. No one's fiddling anyone in here. No, no, Glenn. I want to hear this. <laughs> Who do you think is fucking fiddling me? <laughs> <laughs> Rune <Really> sagely. <laughs> you promised there would be You want more good. <laughs> Here we go. So good. <laughs> oh God, don't call him a pussy boy. Or do. <laughs> <laughs> just... I think you're losing it, fiddle man. <laughs> no. No, this fucking suicide carny is trying to get to me. This ain't gonna work with Titus Hardy. Put the fiddle down. Or walk away. It's that simple. Did not put, put that fiddle, fiddle down. down. Put it down, officer. <laughs> oh, God. I do not <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that time this it hurt you. The play <laughs> totally fell apart. The concept was solid, but the delivery tragically off. You sounded like a madman. <laughs> oh, God. God. <laughs> Daisy, Daisy. I think we might be into uh, the time you can go get your gun. Oh, Close okay. to it as well. Okay. Let's check. Oh, no. I saw the timestamp on your save file, and I thought oh, it worked, okay. but that must be, like, the actual it's time. It's again. Or something. What is it? It is close to 10 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Convinced yeah. Titus is being manipulated. Bad idea. Bringing her up will do no good. You should know by now. Titus will never falter, but you know someone who might. Oh. Fat Angus, the powerful guy, Mr. All Muscle, 
The time has come. Put him in the pressure locker. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez. Their district. Their responsibility. Hmm? He'll get it. Go on. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Hmm. God damn right. Don't come around if you're not from around. Fuck you. I'm not from around. That's not why we... There we go. Don't come to the wild north if you are not white enough. <laughs> it wasn't that. It wasn't. We didn't shoot him. <laughs> That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer. You will be next if you don't shut up. Firearm. A Glass Zero 8 or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Hmm. The lieutenant has put down his notebook. His hand is resting on his holster. He gives you an imperceptible nod. What? What does that mean? We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... <laughs> Shut up, Angus. Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis, stand down, or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. <sighs> Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Ebrard. Fine. I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. <laughs> Kim, we did it. <laughs> Me too. He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Cause the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls plural. There's another girl. Two of them. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did. Or at least he hopes she didn't. Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. You keep taking it easy too, Angus. That's okay with the fat man. Still wheezing there. He couldn't speak if he wanted to. 
we went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. That uh. fucking dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He means they've been fucking. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse. We hanged. Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement <laughs> business. You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. The can't show up on police radar kind. There are people after her from the old, old world. Where she came from. They're powerful. Connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. Mm. So that's a clue. I'm thinking someone's past <laughs> caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot missed. Maybe it was meant for her. Hmm. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. That's right. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. The big guy turns to Glenn, who's about to say something. The blonde shuts his mouth before a word escapes. I'll see it again. All the Hardy Boys are right here, cop. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. <laughs> you don't know her, anyway. <laughs> We're Hardy Boys. And that's it. Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. The lieutenant gives a smile. Only you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love it when you impress Kim. Yes. You <laughs> it's the best dopamine. Hey, Kong, before you go, she, Klausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there is nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection. But that's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. <laughs> I like that one. We'll take that into account. Uh, okay, 1930. Yeah. Gosh, we might get to the end of the stream before we get yeah. to the meeting. We're almost at two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. I think the last, or the, I don't know if it's the last, but I think the next bit of conversation with Clausia might be kind of long, so that might get you to 2200, but it also might get us to the point where we want to end the stream. Yeah. That's fine. I'm not in a hurry to get my gun back or do communism. Yeah. Guns and communism can wait. <laughs> oh, actually, there's one more yeah. on the screen. I think the reason they have that like one room is its own screen is like if you get through that door up on the roof i think there's another 
room you get into that's on the same oh, area. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I think that's part of the whole explore the whirling side quest. Oh, okay. I need to figure that out. Yeah. It's always good to see you. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. <laughs> I understand. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. Is it? Something is off here. <laughs> Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. <laughs> Let the miss speak. She's tall and thin and tired. A twig trying so hard not to break. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. <laughs> I am not. There is more here, <laughs> miss. You're right. There's more. You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. Just business. But bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill, well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. It's not nice. But it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol. Or even in Oranje. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. Mm -hmm. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved. And who hired you? The job was Lou's doing County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scop conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Lou Scop and their friends in the MI. <sighs> Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Sure. I'm not a war criminal. But it was bad. People lost their jobs. Good people too, not just C-suite. A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. Mm -hmm. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. I could... Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. 
I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Oh. So am I. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. That's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Good thinking. Clear your head. <laughs> you should clear your head. Yeah. Get into his mindset. <laughs> did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore. So I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader? Of what? The Hardy Boys. Mm. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation, but I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know, take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? Oops. <laughs> About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what he does. Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew what they were going to do, to make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while, that we should lay low or something. So I did. I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. We can't go after loose cap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know. 
is that you'll get nothing from there. Because I'm an idiot. Which is an indicator of truth. You have to understand the people around here. No one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off, and that little fucker threw stones at him. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. Last week, Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... He's thinking... Are we done here? Or... <laughs> How long will we go now? Uh, two hours, 40 minutes. Okay. Should we talk to Titus one last time, or...? Sure. Okay. Oops. This window oh. is pristine. It's on the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. Looks like you can do a check on that window now, to kind of... Now that you know the bullet came through there. Oh, okay. But I don't think your visual calculus is very good. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. It might be late enough for me to do karaoke as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see the disco ball. Oh, yeah. It's you again. What is it? Oh, I can call you a clown. You can call me a clown. Why? <laughs> this is <laughs> <Lou. laughs> <laughs> 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 I need to pin this on someone and I need to pin this on her. It's also good. Sounds like you want to push this steaming pile of shit on anyone. And now you pick Ruby. Well, not on my watch you won't. Ruby's one of us. We're not gonna throw her under your moral intern steamroller. Fuck that shit. And fuck you too, moral fa- <laughs> <laughs> Ruby is missing. If you hide from the police in a murder investigation, you become a suspect. You know how it works, guys. That's nothing. That's just legalese. You don't even have a sound theory. I don't want to be rude, but we're trying to get some R&R &R here. Think you could fuck off now? I think we'll keep sticking around, Titus. You'll be surprised at how quickly a theory presents itself if you keep looking. From the corner of your eye, you see a little bird fly into the bush, right behind the window, behind Titus's back. <laughs> Salt winch outside. Okay. <laughs> How to 
do karaoke. Let's, let's see. see. I might need to talk to Gart. I might, like, equip your boom box or hey, something. I don't know. was there something you needed? Well, well. Bringing in that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. <laughs> Another thing. Great. I love those. <laughs> you can write out class you ever screw me up as well, mine. Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, maybe we'll equip those. Oh, got that. Oh. Let's see, and we have... Is this it? Yeah. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. You press the large button marked Commencer and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Almost distant somewhere. It sounds like someone's moving in the room, getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in telling you about the tiniest church in Sessongs, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know, this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to that Classia told you about. Perform it, a click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Of course you could sing this, you could take sad to a whole new <laughs> level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it like a million times. Yep, they're all here. All three verses. Money games? Oh, I think because you have that ability that gives you money for oh, like that's right. checks. And the B side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like <laughs> the world itself is telling you to do it. <laughs> Only one obstacle stands on your way. Got. You have oh, to convince no. Gart to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. The lieutenant looks at you <laughs> as you remove the tape from the boombox. <laughs> he doesn't say anything. Alright. Okay. Cool. Hey, was there something <laughs> you No, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous too. Acknowledge. Upset, <laughs> sir. It's part of my quest to self discovery. <laughs> By causing more trouble, I think we're good. It's for the. It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. <laughs> okay, yes, it's for some clients. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. <laughs> the man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. <laughs> he begins to frown. Harsh. Fine, fine. Yes. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. <laughs> I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. Oh yes, yeah. time to do the damage. <laughs> do you want to know what skill you would need? Yes. Pass, uh, drama. Okay, I think I got some drama stuff. Yeah. Okay. Although I have heard it is also funny if you fail to carry the okay. check. So whatever happens, we should at least watch. Yeah, I'm not going to like reload any checks. Yeah. So I'm just going to let my uh, yeah. stuff try its best. Mm -hmm. I think I have a few drama things. Here we go. I feel like the kimono was drama. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my oh, god! What is this outfit? <laughs> <laughs> it's very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> What's called? Oh, it's blue. blue That's right. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> I'll have to finish the whole game. Is yeah. That, that was a negative drama, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. My God. The it's stage cool. is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy. A little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on Actually, the karaoke carousel. I didn't think about the stuff I was holding. Hold on. Oh, oh. Uh, Let's see. Yeah. Looks like I don't have. I know this clipboard. Okay, it doesn't influence drama. Okay. The stage is you feel. So, uh, are you ready for your <laughs> thing? I can see that. <laughs> ready for. You. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing to it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? The bar is full and buzzing with chatter. No one is paying you any attention. But still, you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay, now a couple is looking at you. Even worse. <laughs> You're sweating. Oh, <laughs> oh God, they, <laughs> the hand cannot drum too close to the mic. The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. Okay, here we go. Sisters toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there in their tiny yard there. I have been so glad here. Looking forward to the past here. But now, you are all alone. None of this matters. Now, none of this matters. At all. Awesome. <laughs> oh, here's the lyrics. A lazy applause fills the <laughs> You feel your hands shake as a realness of your body returns to you. Okay. I was about to... I was wondering what happens if you fail, but... The check, I guess Jeff might have posted something in Discord, so I'll have to watch I'll that. I'll have to go watch that later. Uh, <laughs> you need your reptilian brain. <laughs> Pardon me, Kim! Hopefully, we see it. It's all shit, Gar. It like, just gets so good. Pale nothing that will devour the world. So <laughs> the RCM, please don't fire me. <laughs> I want to take it to you, okay. 
<laughs> Should I dedicate it to Kim? Uh... Lieutenant. <laughs> before turning away. He's incapable of blushing. But if he were, <laughs> he'd blush. Good, good. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. Last words. <laughs> Marcus of the world, you know. Enigmatically. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That was great. Yes. Uh, that will close us out. I'm going to this week. Yeah, I'm going to make that outfit you're wearing right now my first cosplay. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Including the food box? Yes. And the tear bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah. I'm glad we closed it out with karaoke. Yes, me too. <laughs> see if we can get back to Yakuza on Friday. Yeah, I think my arm's feeling better. Although I do have to do Final Fantasy rating tomorrow. That's yes, I'm feeling that's right. Dracula. That's yes. very, uh... Very taxing. taxing. I have to kill that stupid bird again. <laughs> yes. Alright, well, I'll see you in a few days. See ya. Thanks for watching.